<laughs> I'm thoroughly freaked out by my blue eyes. Um, what can I say? I've got some new contacts just, just for Scully. Um, but I'm still going to put some eye drops in immediately because my eyes are so dry. Okay, so starting off with foundation. I'm going to combine two shades of the Marc Jacobs Shameless Foundation. I'm choosing this because it's um, quite a light coverage and I just need to even out my skin a little bit to be more like Scully. Um, dabbing this on first and then I'm going to blend it all in with a beauty, ben blah, beauty blender. <laughs> This foundation is confusing to me. <laughs> it looks good on camera, and it looks good like when I catch a glimpse of myself, but when I'm putting it on, I'm a bit like, oh no, oh no, it doesn't look great, it looks a little dry. Um, so I've been experimenting with different ways to apply it, and it's actually the only foundation that I think applies best directly with a beauty blender. Um, so I dabbed it on first on that side, but for the rest of my face, I'm just going to go straight into the foundation on the sponge to the face. <laughs> it also is, I think, marketed as a full coverage foundation, but I find it's medium at most. So bear that in mind. That's why I'm using this. Um, I did, uh, pick up this foundation at Winners at quite a discount. And I also got one of the shades on buns, so almost free um, on the trading platform. Yeah, so once I get over um, just how this foundation applies, I do realize that it is a good light to medium, just evening things out foundation. But uh, you can still see my skin through it, which is ideal uh, for a Scully look because she doesn't wear a heavy, heavy base and um, most of the coverage going forward is just going to be from a little bit of concealer but keeping things natural. The concealer I'm going to use here is the Revolution Conceal and Define. I'm using the shade C1. I used this uh, in the Season 2 Scully video that I did um, and it's a great concealer. I love it. I also featured it in my go to summer glow video so you can check that out there blending that in again with my beauty blender and that's essentially the base before we powder uh, because again this is like 1995 or so 96 everything's gonna be quite matte um, and also for me personally I would need the concealer to be set anyhow to make sure it lasts um, and the powder I'm going to use is the uh, Clarins powder I also used in my last Scully tutorial you're gonna see a lot of the same products and techniques Scully's makeup doesn't change drastically um, but I did my best to try and use like I use a different foundation and I'm gonna use um, some different eyeshadows to achieve achieve the look and hopefully I'll keep things interesting for you. Apologies if you uh, hear a lot of background noise. It's our first officially cold fall day here and uh, it's very windy and blustery. Leaves are flying everywhere. It's pretty spooky. It's very Halloween-y. <laughs> but sorry if it's distracting to you. Focusing the powder really in my T-zone and uh, where that concealer is, but I will take it lightly over the rest of the face because I'm going to be using um, powder contours and blush and um, I want to make sure that I've got a good base underneath, but just lightly powdering because my skin is quite dry. Brows. Okay, so I studied Jillian's brows a little more closely. Um, this time around. Um, I'm filling in with Anastasia Brow Wiz here in the shade Caramel. I've mentioned this in videos before, but this is the shade that I think matches my hair best. Um, 
my sorry my colored hair not my natural hair so that's going to be um, kind of the base like I'm going to draw the shape and fill in the gaps that I have um, with the brow whiz before then um, adding in a second product to define uh, some more like hair strokes because uh, Jillian's brows are quite a bit fuller than mine at this point and uh, yeah, I need all the help I can get with the brows. <laughs> I mean, up till this point, this is um, pretty much my standard brow routine, you know, filling in the tail end where my uh, hairs are mo the most sparse um, and then defining the arch. I mean, it's no surprise to you folks, maybe, that <laughs> my brows are pretty similar to Jillian Anderson's, but I noticed a few differences, especially um, at the front of the brow. Um, I typically will brush the hairs up um, so that they look very bushy and fullest at the front of the brow, and then they taper off. Um, but Jillian's are a little bit different. I'm going to show you here. Um, at the front, they are brushed through, but um, it's hard to explain. But as you can see there, I just brushed the very beginning down so that it starts small and then gets bigger, whereas mine just start big and get small. So that's the shape I'm trying to achieve here. And um, as I mentioned, I'm going to use another product. Uh, this is also by Anastasia Beverly Hills. This is the uh, Dip Brow, it, also in the shade Caramel. And I'm using one of the Anastasia brushes, I believe it's the number seven. And I'm taking a little bit of the product on my brush and then gently, 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 so gently <laughs> drawing in individual hairs. I mean, this is optional for uh, you if you're going to try to recreate this look, um, but I'm just trying to emulate the fuller brows uh, that Jillian had at this, this point. Um, this product can be really tricky to use. Um, it's taken me <laughs> years of experimenting, um, but really just trying to use the lightest hand and flicking the brush um, will give you kind of the finest hair strokes. Moving on to the eyeshadow, I'm going to use a Bobbi Brown palette. I believe it's called the Rich Chocolate palette. And the shades I'm going to be using are the first three there, Bone, Stone, and Frappe. <laughs> you can also use um, MAC, a uh, sorry, Soft Brown, and then Omega, the two I'm holding there. Those are pretty close. And um, also this Smashbox palette has some great uh, Scully eyeshadows, so that's the full exposure palette. I'm going to be mostly using a 229-217 from MAC, and then also the Real Techniques Powder Blue brush. I'll have everything listed in the description. So first, using the shade Bone all over the eye um, as a base to kind of mattify the eye and uh, get ready for the other shadows. You can just use um, a shadow that's close to your own skin tone, but this one works for me. Then taking the third shade there, Frappe, um, that's going to be the base, like it's going to go all over the eyelid um, and a little bit further up but in a round motion. You can see there I'm just using the brush to pack most of the eyeshadow close to the lash line um, and then blending it upwards. And I'm, I'm really just following the shape of my eye and using my uh, crease as a guideline. So it's not going to go much further than the crease. I'm taking a clean uh, 217 or sorry the the 217 I put my bone shade on with to blend the edges because um, this is a pretty neutral look overall because you know Scully's a natural beauty. That uh, shade frappe is also going to go all along the outer corner of my lash line which I'll then give 
another blend. Essentially, you want um, a medium tone brown that's um, not too warm, not too cool, so, you know, medium, <laughs> neutral. Um, to be your base, that's going to go all over the eyes. Um, and then in a moment, we're going to take a little bit of a deeper shade to just define the crease. This eyeshadow look um, and the hair and the whole look, um, pardon me, overall, I'm basing off of the season three episode, Jose Chung's From Outer Space. Um, so that's the Scully I'm thinking of at this point. And you can see there her um, eyes are well defined but not heavy. So like I said we're gonna take the uh, darkest shade from those three and go back to my two, 229 brush and I'm gonna define the crease and try to round it out because as you saw in that photo um, that's the kind of shape of Jillian's eyeshadow. I'm gently pressing this darker eyeshadow through my crease um, or rather, it's it's more of like the socket bone that I'm using to just really rock the brush back and forth um, to find that shape. Um, you can use more of like a rounded, pointed blender brush for this, um, but personally, I find um, this a much easier way to just move side to side. Um, with this more flat brush and then I'll go in um, with a more rounded blending brush to blend everything and uh, make sure nothing is too harsh. So it's just a little bit of um, subtle shading but I think it makes quite a bit of difference on my eyes. It just makes the sockets look a little bit deeper than they actually are. See? <laughs> Just lightly taking that um, deepest shade at the, the bottom lash line as well, um, and then giving that a quick blend. Pulling out my uh, Real Techniques Night Owl palette and taking that darkest navy eyeshadow on a very small angle brush and lightly pressing that along the lash line. Um, this uh, era of Scully was probably the first time we started seeing this uh, kind of brown eyeshadow with then a little bit of blue eyeshadow at the lash line. And I point that out because it was a very strong memory of mine. Um, years ago at the height of the show, I would say probably around 98, 99, before the movie, um, there was a, a little section of InStyle magazine that had a short interview with the uh, makeup artist on the show who mentioned that they used blue eyeliner on Jillian and my mind was blown because <sighs> up until that point everything I knew about eyeshadow was that <laughs> if you had brown eyes you had to wear brown eyeshadow and you weren't allowed to wear blue eyeshadow this was something ingrained in me somehow by my mother uh, which was a bummer to me because I loved wearing bright eyeshadow, especially blue. And I always thought of Scully as like a very neutral, reserved woman. And I was like, how could she be wearing blue eyeshadow? But now knowing what I do about makeup, it actually makes a lot of sense. Um, and it's just like very lightly at the lash line. And as you can see there, I'm further buffing over it uh, with my eyeshadow brush to make sure it's just like the hint of a shadow and definition. But as a child, when I read that in the magazine, I was like, I could only picture like a bright blue eyeshadow. But navy makes sense. It's almost like a softer version of a black at the lash line, which is, I think, a really nice look. So I went ahead and I purchased myself a new brown mascara because I used the same brown mascara in my last two Scully videos. So here we go. Here's a here's one that was on sale. It's a CoverGirl uh, mascara. I think it's called Exhibitionist. It's actually pretty good. Um, but as before, I just want the smallest amount of definition and to further... Um, 
idea of these just being natural lashes, um, I'm going to use a clean spoolie um, to really comb out any excess mascara. I, I often forget that, you know, pro makeup artists will clean off the mascara wand entirely before even putting it on a client's lash or will comb out all the excess um, to make it look more natural. And uh, of course, with TV and film makeup, that's what they're that's what they're going for. You know, they they want their character to look defined, but not like they're wearing makeup per se. So I'm moving on now to finish off um, some details on the skin. Using this Cheekbone Cosmetics contour palette, I'm going to use the contour shade on a very teeny tiny little eyeliner brush to throw on some freckles. Um, it always makes me nervous doing this because it looks wild at first, um, but eventually it looks natural. <laughs> I'm not going for a Pippi Longstocking uh, situation here. Um, I'm just trying to mimic more of Jillian's natural skin. So as randomly as possible, dotting that um, contour powder all over my nose um, and then taking my beauty blender that still has a bit of the foundation and pressing over it so that will kind of it will make it a little more natural you don't want to just draw freckles directly on now uh, Jillian has most of the freckles around her nose and eyes so that's where I'll focus uh, them and then also throw some on my forehead and and cheeks and um, you can use your beauty blender, you can use your finger to tap over the powder, um, or even some additional translucent powder. Whatever it takes to just knock them back a bit and appear as though they're just part of your skin. I'm going to do a little bit of light contouring um, using the NYX blush in taupe, you can see there, well loved, and the Real Techniques contour brush. Um, so because my face shape is more broad uh, than Jillian's, hers is definitely longer, um, I'm angling the contour upwards. Um, typically my contour goes straight out to the center of my ear, but I'm trying to angle it a little bit more on the side um, towards the top of my ear. Just going in a diagonal line, but uh, sorry, it's more of a diagonal line rather than straight out as my natural cheekbones go. And also, um, once I've laid down the contour powder, I'm taking the uh, brush that I used for translucent powder uh, to further blend it and make sure the line isn't looking too harsh. Um, you can choose whatever contour powder works for your skin tone. Um, and now we're going to blush using uh, my same <laughs> MAC blush from the last Scully tutorial, whoops! Um, and that's going all over my cheeks and then really um, powdering my nose with that blush as well. Which is a weird feeling, uh, but just like those freckles, once, once you blend it, um, it will look more natural. Um, this will help with the beginning of contouring of Scully's nose, or my nose to look like Scully. Um, it's not a harsh contour, but you'll see directly to the sides of her nose towards her eyes. Um, there is quite a bit of shadows there. So that's what I'm trying to emulate um, with that blush before very gently contouring my nose. Um, I'm using my 217 brush from MAC and the NYX contour powder. I'm using the contour to almost connect where my eyeshadow is in the crease to the contours of the bridge of my nose. Um, that's where I find I'll be able to get the, the most definition to slim down uh, my nose. Jillian's nose is, is long and slim compared to mine. And then I'm also pulling that contour out on the very sides there, as you can see, towards my eyes. And that's going to cast a light shadow with, uh, hopefully without being 
too harsh of a line. Now for Scully's lips, I have splurged and I got some MAC products. And I'm also going to feature this really, really old CoverGirl lipstick, which I checked and they do still make. So there's the CoverGirl one swatched on my hand. Um, and then I'll show you what the MAC one looks like next to it. I think it's pretty close um, for the Scully lip that I want. But um, the CoverGirl one is a little more slippery and glossy in texture. So I'll probably combine both of them. I'm first starting by patting the matte, uh, sorry, MAC lipstick onto my lips all over the inner part of my lips just to kind of get a base color. I'm almost rubbing it into the lips so that it's a sheer buildup of color so it doesn't look too lipsticky, if that makes sense. And then blotting well and kind of repeating the process. Now, because Scully's lips are kind of the opposite of mine, where her uh, top lip is bigger than her bottom lip, I have the opposite, where I have quite a large bottom lip and a smaller top lip. Um, so without completely drawing brand new <laughs> lips on my face or like trying a more of like a costumey drag technique, what I'm going to do is just really focus a lot of the pigment on um, my top lip. Um, and blur the bottom lip a bit. I'll literally remove a bit of the lipstick from the, my bottom lip with my fingers there to just pull back the pigment so that the focus is really on the top. And then using a lip liner, I um, further build up and define the top lip. I'm just kind of connecting uh, the corners of my top lip there uh, where it's not as strongly defined, but not doing like a full overdrawing of the lip. This is Max Lip Pencil and Spice, which is like the iconic lip liner of the 90s. I don't know for sure that it was used on the show, but certainly going into season four and five, there's a pretty good chance because it's quite a warm, warm color. Um, but combined with this uh, lipstick, I think it's a good kind of neutral combination. I'm going to take a q-tip over the edges again to really try and make it look as natural as possible. Uh, like that's just my my lip shape that I was blessed with. Um, and I'm going to also take that CoverGirl lipstick over the top because the um, the MAC lipstick is quite a bit more matte and tight and I just want uh, to smooth things out a little bit. And with a final blot, uh, that's the finished lip and kind of the finished makeup look. Um, so you can see that I've got my hair up in rollers. Um, this is the best way I've found to do Scully's Season 3 hair. And I do have a, a full separate video on how to do the hair, which I'll link as well. Um, but we're going to fast forward a bit so you can see me complete the final costume and you'll see uh, the hair and makeup and everything done. I'm putting on my costume or my blazer on top of my finely knit uh, <laughs> shirt. You know, this, this era of Scully is still almost kind of like late 80s, like a little, little bit frumpy, um, but she wears a lot of neutral tones, so I chose a burgundy this time found this blazer and shirt and my other Scully blazer at my local thrift store. So that's where you want to look, thrift or vintage, uh, but you're looking definitely for late 80s, early 90s look. Throwing on my badge, um, and I'm also just pointing out that Scully has very well manicured nails, kind of at all times. So um, I had my nails done recently, but when my nails were shorter, I uh, would pop on some fake ones. And this is my Scully Cross necklace. This is like an iconic part of her look and her identity. Um, this one I got on Amazon and is actually stainless steel because I have a metal allergy. There she is. <laughs> that was exciting for me. That was the first time I, I put the cross on and it was like, oh yeah, now I'm really Scully. <laughs> 
Okay, and uh, giving myself a lint roll because I've got schmutz and dog hair and all kinds of crap all over me. Um, and there you go, that's the, the final look. Um, you can see the hair is done, giving it a final spritz. I color my hair um, myself with a box dye by L'Oreal. If you want to know how I do my hair color, I can do a video for sure. And I think this is the best color for this era of Scully. Into season four, five, and six, it definitely gets deeper and more red. This is still more of like a coppery color at this stage. And of course, you can definitely do the same hair um, hairstyle on a wig if you've got one, if you uh, haven't fully committed to the Scully look as I have. <laughs> Pulling up my Nokia 101, the original Nokia phone uh, that Scully and Mulder used. <laughs> I, I found this phone on eBay, um, and I've also got my fake toy gun, which I don't really love as part of the costume, because I just don't love, love guns. But you know, they're law enforcement, they're always packing, <laughs> so you can add that to your costume to kind of complete the look. That's it. That's the full Scully Halloween costume. Um, I'd love to know if any of you tried to recreate this look and go out as Scully. Please, please, please tag me um, in your photos or your videos. Um, and let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Trust no one. The truth is out there. Deny everything. Sure. Fine. Whatever. Mulder.